imagine that you're only interested in one specific protein and trying to detect its presence across hundreds of samples. Each sample is from a different batch of cells, and there are bound to be other proteins or mixtures of contaminants that will limit your ability to detect the protein of interest. The Western Bologna technique is a sophisticated method of protein analysis as compared to a more global detection method like Kumasi staining. Both techniques can be used to estimate protein size when coupled with SDS page, but vary in their specificity and sensitivity. In principle, the Western blot is very similar to other immunological assays that rely on antibody binding to detect proteins. These assays are as robust as the quality of the antibodies available, and these material requirements can be quite expensive. Compared to other staining methods like the Kumasi stain, the Western blot is very sensitive and very specific. Depending on the antibodies used, this technique can detect one type of protein in a mixed sample at very low concentrations. A Western blot involves transferring the separated proteins from an SDS page gel onto a nitrocellulose membrane. This membrane is then used as a surface to present the proteins for antibody binding. Only the proteins which the antibodies bind to will appear on the membrane. These are usually visible as bands and can be compared against the protein ladder to determine their size. Let's take a closer look at how a Western blot works. We begin with the nitrocellulose membrane which has the separated proteins already transferred on. The first step is to block the membrane with blocking buffer to make sure that any areas which might be sticky are neutralized. This helps minimize any non-specific antibody binding which would otherwise result in false positives. A primary antibody is then applied which is specific for the protein that needs to be detected. Next, a secondary antibody is applied which is capable of detecting the type of primary antibodies used. These secondary antibodies can be specific to primary antibodies which were made in mice or goats or even humans, but not all three at once. Secondary antibodies also have a conjugate attached to them, and in the final step when a substrate buffer is added, it causes a color change. This color change is what allows us to visualize the bands on the membrane. Let's look at this process in practice. We begin by sandwiching the gel and the membrane between layers of absorbent materials, which have been moisturized in buffer. A roller is used once the materials are all in place to push out any air bubbles which may be trapped between the layers. The tray containing the gel and membrane is then placed into a semi-dry blotter, which applies a current through the gel and membrane. This effectively mirror transfers the proteins from the gel onto the membrane. Once the proteins are transferred, the entire membrane is immersed in blocking buffer. This minimizes the chances of false positives by preventing non-specific binding of antibodies to the membrane. After the blocking step, the buffer is washed off and primary antibodies are applied. As before, the membrane is immersed in the solution containing the antibodies and allowed to incubate for up to an hour. Once the primary antibodies have finished binding, they are washed off and secondary antibodies are applied as before. The final step is the addition of substrate buffer. This is done once the secondary antibodies have bound and any excess antibodies have been washed off. Once the substrate buffer is applied, bands begin to appear on the membrane where the target proteins are located. This is a relatively quick reaction, which occurs usually within 5 minutes of the addition of the substrate. Looking closer at the final products, we can see that there are clear differences between the western blot and the Kumasi stain. The Western blot shows individual bands, whereas the Kumasi shows a smear from top to bottom. These results indicate our target proteins are present in the sample and also their size. However, several other proteins are also in the sample, so it needs to be purified if we want a pure sample of our target protein. Getting a clear indication of the size of proteins is important to verify its authenticity and make sure that it hasn't degraded. The easiest way to get a rough estimate is to compare it directly to the known sizes of proteins on a protein ladder. However, this is only an estimate and more accurate data may be required. To do this, we'll use something called an RF value. RF values are calculated by dividing the distance the target protein has migrated from the top of the membrane by the distance the loading die moved from the top of the membrane. These values are calculated for the target protein and all the proteins on the protein ladder. The RF values for the protein ladder are then plotted on a logarithmic scale and the line of best fit is determined. The equation for this line is then used to calculate the size of the target protein using its RF value. STS page, Kamasi and Western blotting are the starting point for protein analysis and a routine part of research projects in molecular biosciences. 
After following these protocols, you can obtain a snapshot of the proteins found in your samples. What you do with this information depends on the research question. Are you looking for one specific protein or a group of proteins? Can you tell them apart by size alone or is further identification needed through other techniques? It is up to you to drive the direction of your research using this information.